of the fountain. So that the, the, you know, the fountain is the focal point. So it's um, I measured everything equally, and it, it just and there's a lot of rhythm in here. You see, the boxwoods all have a rhythm. The boxwoods around, and then the hosses are placed, and it's just it's it's really a somewhat of a formula. But in the beginning, I, we tried doing asymmetrical designs and we had a focal point over there and we did it all on paper and it was very quick and easy and um but it, it came down to it is what are we going to look at from the inside you know and i wanted to be able to see this whole business when i'm sitting inside and if that focal point over there it would have been impossible it would have been great outside garden been more of a mountain type garden but it just wouldn't work for people so that's something you got to think about is what works for you in, in, the, in the garden and what you want to do and what you want to see and how you want to live in it because these small spaces they just you have to you live in them we live inside and outside in the summertime and the winter about half and half and it's, it's also just, flat here Hugh, so this it, works really exactly. well it's, yes. if, it's, can't, if you're on a hillside this thing will work i know and unless you build a retaining wall more, <laughs> it's symmetrical on, on a hillside this was just the perfect situation for just a, a, a west side of the garden and i think also when you have water you know we have that needs some more water but when you had that um it just felt like it needed a focal point and so you know, that was one of Peverall's things, you know, stone statues. And it, it works really well there. And I, we moved it, that was in the front yard, and moved it back here this, this winter. And it, I really love it there, because it's, it's quiet, it's easy, and the birds like it. And, the, and then I put this here, when it's full of water, the birds come and bathe in this. And it's just delightful to see these little sparrows just bathing, and, and they drink out of it, and they fly and eat the food. It's like a dive bombing situation here. It's just so much fun. And we have white squirrels, and we had a baby white, white squirrel squirrels. last week. Oh, Three oh, now. And then we have a little boomer squirrel. They come to the feeder. They're the cutest little oh, squirrels. Yeah. I say that they're like halfway between a chipmunk and a regular squirrel. And they hop like a chipmunk, but they're just cute. So the only thing that gets any trouble from me is uh, Mary Palmer takes care of the bears, and I take care of the, the, uh, the gray squirrels. And now, unfortunately, they're not popular because they they're aggressive and they broke that that um, my valerian. That's a very a uh, fine plant. This was, uh, you know, one great plant, and uh, we watched him climb up. And Mary Palmer said he's gonna break it. And down it went. And the gray squirrels, you just don't, unfortunately, don't like them. I don't. They're uh, invasive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then when it comes to color, um, in in this maybe not the rule of thumb but I chose to have a subtle color and just two colors one is white and there's not a lot of white but there's some white blue in. but the blue is such a, a soothing and, and it, it it recedes a lot and so if, with this garden you have color but it's just subtle and it's in the background so it, it just you have to think about things like that if you want something to you know right up front see I've got those orange um, whatever they are yeah, um, they, they, I felt like that was fine for up there, but I had them originally down here, and it just, just, it, it dominated so much that I took them and, and, and I had all white and and blue everywhere, and I'm really happy with that because it, it expands a small space when you have a, um, a small uh, area. Mm -hmm. So, and um, anything else? I, no. I think that's about it. One thing that we were challenged by was that we have um, so many hobbies, and like I just got a greenhouse this year, and Pick up um, I got a green. We have so many hobbies, so we're a little challenged by the fact that we have a very small footprint. We're used to a very large property, so we shoehorned in a nine by ten greenhouse behind the fence, and it intrudes in our space because it has the you know you can see the roof line, but it's not so bad. It's honest. But I think it pulls you over there. It's because you have foliage in front. It's like Oh, I have to go tend to the greenhouse. It's not forgotten. <laughs> yeah, you're surprise. right. You know what so I mean? So if anyone wants some microgreens. <laughs> if a full thing, I'd be, you know, I've, I've tried the best I can to Thank hide you. it. Thank you. But, <laughs> but I'm more concerned about the house next door. And you see, I just planted those, those trees behind this block out of the house this, this winter. Yes. And it's working. 
you know. Yeah. And so I feel with that little greenhouse, is it obviously it gets enough light? It's, and I have supplemental light. What uh -huh. I grow is are not light dependent. I'm growing sprouts, so I have microgreens and sunflower, pea greens, buckwheat, and these are things I crop and make into juice. And I love my juices, and they love that greenhouse. And then it, in the winter time, I can use supplemental light to start our annuals quicker which we didn't do well this year because we didn't have it set up in time. But you can really grow annuals almost six weeks ahead if you have that to grow in. And I'm trying to propagate some elderflower right now. I'm not having good luck with it, I think. My fingers are crossed, but it's losing its leaves. And I did a lot of stem cutting, so we'll see. Because my dream is to have um, that whole pasture out there surrounded by elder, golden elderflower so I could crop it easily. Golden elderflower blooms two to three weeks, maybe a month, ahead of regular elderflower, the, the native species. That would be elderflower nigra. What we have is elderflower, oh, excuse me, Sambucus nigra. Sambucus canadensis is what we grow here. And it's uh, na natively, but they both taste good. So with that, would you all like to... Let me to, make uh -huh. one, one more point. Is that I think that, and I'm always a, a great advocate of, of a, is a lot of grass in a small space because it expands the area. This garden, if it, it didn't have grass, it would just seem a lot smaller. So it, it's just like a carpet. Just, you want to expand. I wanted this to seem larger than it is, and it, it is, it seems larger than it is. And the grass is the thing that does it. And also, uh, Another thing I like to have is always to have some sort of a border. You know, I have the rocks was a perfect tier, but I could have used pieces of um, um, wood, mm -hmm. which would be logs. The, you know, the um, locusts. You could mm -hmm. do that. You could do logs. You could do a lot of things. But this this seemed kind of native here, and it was easy to do, and I could do it myself. Inexpensive, also. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Did y'all bring in dirt? Because the dirt at my house doesn't look like this. Well, <laughs> this is this is all the this right here has been brought in. It's the best. This grows better than anything else. I mean, everything. Did out you? Here is I don't know if we so brought nicely. any. No. No, we yeah. we did add um, lots of compost, and we do actively compost in our. We have a rolling bin. We have compost tea. And we have the worm juice, which I'm glad to show you all, because we need to draw some off. It's got a lot of worm juice and it got some water in it too. But that's so rich, so that that brings micronutrients and all of the um, different soil fungi love. They love that, and so they help the roots absorb the nutrients because the soil is becoming very rich. And we added tons of earthworms to the soil, which would help you very much. Yeah. Earthworms are your best fertilizer. I mean, just Interesting. Just have to Put yeah, after your class, we went and got them. them. Yeah. Well, we got a hardware uh, house. Country stores Reason. coming up here right out of Wall Hollow, and, and, and they, they sell them as fish food, you know, fish. Mm -hmm. fish so you can just get those worms. They, they have an Ace fish Hardware here. Really? Yeah, I'm saying, yeah, Reeves Ace Hardware. Different kind of worm. And you just let them go when you Yeah, you walk in. They're sold as bait. The BP market right here. Oh, we're done. It's the nicest thing you can do for a box of worms is to put them in your garden instead of on your hook. Absolutely. So we think we're you're on a mission of mercy when we put them there. Yes, rescue worms. So easy to do. Just let them go. That's exactly right. I can do that. Save everybody. Everybody will be selling out. I want to thank you all so much for very successful first ever garden guru session and I hope it met your needs and of course um, when we have our casual drinks you can certainly help yourself and con converse some more. Thank you.